Hi, welcome to the introduction of a series of videos about creating a virtual model of a robot that uses the mechanical wheels. My name is Juliana and I'm part of a team called Athena Semear at the University of São Paulo, Brazil. Our team participate in competitions of autonomous robots and we spend a lot of time developing with Ross. So we are going to have four videos in which we teach you how to build and control the Summit XL Steel robot starting from scratch from the DAE files. And today we will focus in building the mechanical wheels and launch them in the gazebo simulation. Most of the knowledge used in this tutorial was obtained on the URDF classes in the Robot Ignite Academy. In this platform, you are able to use integrated tools like the terminal, the gazebo simulation, and EDI alongside with the explanation of what is going on in an easy and practical way. So, I just want to be sure that you know what a mechanical wheel is, so you can take a look in those two pictures. There are two very common types of mechanical wheel, and they look like pretty strange, but they are very useful because those small rollers they make it capable for the wheel to move straight ahead or sideways so we can get a robot with three degrees of freedom what is very useful in some applications actually you can find some pretty cool robots all over the world and one of them is the Omni Move from KUKA and this robot is used to carry really heavy things and it has a lot of sensors so this is a pretty cool standard in the industry and also you can find the Summit XL Steel there's a pretty cool robot as well and that is the one that we're going to build so in order to choose for the mechan wheels usually I have those ideas in mind you only need those wheels if you have benefits in a autonomic drive and put in another way a robot that moves and turn into all directions three degrees of freedom otherwise they are usually more expensive than simpler rubber wheels and have a bigger inertia value which can decrease your robot overall acceleration and response our simulation are not truly cr close to reality because to simulate the mechanical wheel, we do not simulate their dynamic property in gazebo. We only move the robot accordingly to how it would work kinematically. So I'm going to make it more clear when we set up the plugins in the third videos of the series. You can have access to all the code and all the files that we are using for this tutorial. You just need to click the link below and it's going to bring to that page. So you can open the ROS jacked file, the simulation, and you're going to come to that interface. Just open a terminal and IDE. Oh wait, yeah, let's open the IDE. I usually like to maximize so here you can check out you can have all the files just open the Catkin workspace and you can take a look all the files are here most of those folders are standard you can check out there the VAE files I'm showing you the software blender you don't need to have that software in order to follow the tutorial. I just want you to have a quick glance into what, what those DAE files are. So here I'm going to open one of them. And you can see 
those are just design files and if you know how to do that you can change the color change the size put your name over here and those files you are going to import in gazebo The property tag is useful to simplify constants that are going to be used throughout the files. Also, I recommend you to use this to improve the readability of the code. The macro tag is useful to create macros that automate the creation of the parts of the robot or some calculations. This one has the intention to calculate the inertia of a sim simple cylinder. You are going to note how simple it is when we declare our real inertia if we have this macro over here and I want to show you that this works like it's a function like in any other language so it's very easy to use to create the wheel we are going to use the link command and define the blocks visual collision and inertia let's walk through each one this visual, uh, there is no dynamic properties here, only the visual part of the wheel. So here you can set the mesh file, more specifically the DAE file. Those are the same that I showed you before. After that we have the collision tag, and here's one of the most important parts, because we are going to define the collision properties of the wheel. As I said before, if your die file is too heavy, too much polygons, the collision calculations are going to be very slow so in order to make it faster to speed up calculations you can substitute the mesh file for a simpler geometry like a cylinder and finally we have the inertia this is very important for the dynamics of the robot if the wheels are too heavy or too light your simulation is going to be far from realistic but you can get a really good result using the approximations of simpler geometry forms like cubes, cylinders or sphere. After creating the link, we need to connect this link to some other link in the robot. In order to do that, we have the join interface. The most important piece of information here is the insert block parameter, which has the same order as origin as a parameter in the definition of the macro. There are some very useful commands to make this joint as close as possible to your real motor. You can set the limit of the effort and the limit of the velocity and also the friction and the damp of it. Using those four parameters you can make it very close to your real robot and you can check if you have the power to move it. The less important part is the creation of the transmission. This is the interface between the joint and your actuator. So if you want to actuate on a joint, you need to create a transmission. And that's what we are doing here because this is we are going to move this wheel. The last part is to set the overall parameters of the simulation of the wheel, like the friction between the wheel and the ground, and so on. Those are pretty standards if you're not willing to do a hyper-realistic simulation. So you can stick to those that I set. Now we are done with this file. I'm going to just show you other files that are going to be useful. Here is the global chakra file. Here we create our robot. And this is the launch file that we're going to use to see our simulation. But those two files I'm going to explain in details in the next video. Right now I just want to show you how the simulation looks like. So I'm going to open the simulation right here. We are going to open a terminal. Let's launch the simulation.
Okay. It should appear. Okay, can you you can see right here? Oh yeah, here we have our mechano wheels. Great. So besides that, we can check those wheels in the RV's interface. Let's take a look over here. Let's open another terminal, right? Just wait a little bit. It's loading. That's great. Take a look over here. We're going to open the graphical tools. Okay, let's. Double key, click over here. Let's go to find our model, our model over here. Oh yeah, look over here. So that's the simplest way to see our mechanical wheels. So that's it guys. Today we've learned what are Omni wheels and how to model them to launching a zip software. In the next video, we are going to create a chassis and assemble it with our recently made wheels to get a full summited robot. I hope to see you soon. If you have any comments, please write them below. Bye for now.